Director, uh, Deputy Director Jonathan Lee, thank you for being here this evening. Uh, and thanks to Steve Gladman, who chairs the Water Sword Advisory Board, for informing us tonight about the 2023 utility adjustments rates that we'll hear momentarily. Um, also want to thank the public, including my son, who's decided to join us this evening um, for taking the time to come down to City Hall or watch on streaming uh, services here this evening. Um, the purpose of this hearing is to review and comment on the 2023 uh, water and sewer rates for the City of Columbus and Central Ohio customers that receive their water and sewer from the city. Uh, we will dis also discuss the, the department's payment system program for low-income residents and seniors who may qualify for reduced rates. Um, uh, this hearing is available to, to stream on the CTV website, and the video will also be posted on the City of Columbus YouTube channel following the event. I uh, would also, at this point, like to turn over the mic to uh, Chair Gladman to start his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Dorrance. Um, I'd like to read a letter into the record that we uh, sent to you and President Harding. This letter makes the recommendations from the advisory board for the 2023 rates. Members of the Sewer and Water Advisory Board, with representation from the Department of Public Utilities, met four times in 2022 to review and discuss the operations of project planning activities of the water, sewer, and stormwater enterprises. At our October 19th meeting, we reviewed proposed water, sanitary sewer, and stormwater rates. The board approved the following rate recommendations effective January 1, 2023. For the fiscal year 2023, the board recommends an increase in sanitary sewer rates of 5%, water rates of 4%, and stormwater rates of 2%. When considered together, the bill impact on an average residential customer within the city of Columbus is 4.45% overall. This adds approximately $14.07 in charges to a residential customer. Um, each quarterly bill, or $56.29 annually. Over the past few years, the board has not raised the sewer extra th strength charges. In 2023, per our rate study, the board recommends an increase of 5% to our outside and outside biological oxygen demand uh, charge and an increase of 5% to the TKN charge. The board recommends continue, continuing the surcharge within the sanitary sewer rates known as clean river fee. This fee supports payment of expenses related to construction of projects mandated by the consent orders entered into to eliminate combined sewer and sanitary sewer overflows. This charge is based on measured impervious surfaces. This equivalent residential rate we refer to it as ERU, equals 2,000 square feet of impervious surface areas for each residential customer, both inside the city and outside the city, is billed one ERU per month. Commercial industrial customers are charged based on the actual measured impervious area, and the department updates that impervious area on a, on a regular basis. The Board of also recommends continuing the low-income discount for water and sanitary sewer commodity charges at 20%. Low-income customers are defined as being at 150% of the federal poverty level or qualifying for a state low-income program. The Department of Public Utilities is continuing its outreach efforts to identify customers that have not taken advantage of the low-income program. Lastly, the board recommends no increase for sewer and water capacity charges for 2023. The board feels that the rate adjustments are fair and equitable and are necessary to provide funding to support the day-to-day -day operations of the division, as well as continuing to support a critical and sizable capital improvement program within the Department of Utilities. As always, the board will work with the public utility staff to ensure that future rate increases are minimized to the extent possible. If you or other city council members have questions, I would like to uh, answer those at this time or or at your convenience. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair Gladman, and again, I appreciate your continued service on the uh, Sewer Water Advisory Board. Um, at this time, I'd like to turn the mic over to Public Utilities Deputy Director John Lee uh, to present details on the proposed rates. Uh, Mr. Lee, the floor is yours. Good evening, Councilmember Dorans and members of Council. Thank you for the opportunity to present the Department of Public Utilities proposed Utility rates for 2023. 
Our proposed rates for 2023, as mentioned by Chairman Gladman, are 4% for water, 5% for sewer, and 2% for storm. The overall percentage increase to a residential bill is 4.45%. Again, when we look at this on a quarterly basis, the residential bill impact at 30 CCFs, which is a family of four typically, is around $14.07 per quarter. If we annualize that, that increase at 30 CCFs would be around 56.29. I'll discuss a little bit more information on our low income and senior discounts throughout the presentation, but those are planning to continue in 2023. Uh, I'd like to present a little bit of history where we have been in the past in 2020, our rates in 2021 as well, our rates were a bit lower. Actually, for 2022, when we compare that to 2023, uh, we're slightly lower. Last year, we were around 4.49. Again, this year, around 4.45. Our rates are charged for inside city customers. Uh, we have a different rate class for low-income customers, and we have a different rate class for outside city customers. This slide shows the difference at 30 CCFs, as I just discussed, but also at 17 CCFs. 17 CCFs is more in the range of uh, a single family uh, customer, one to two customers in the home. And so you can see the difference there, their bill impact on a quarterly basis would be around $9.05 or around $36.18 annually. For low income customers, they receive, those that qualify receive a 20% discount on their commodity charge. You can see there that their bill on a quarterly basis is slightly lower, around $7.77 or $31.09. Outside city customers in our suburban areas are charged a little bit more. Um, compared to the inside city customers at 30 CCFs, we see an increase on a quarterly basis around $15.75 or $63 annually. Next slide, I'd like to go over a little bit of our rate setting goals and our assumptions whenever we develop these rates. Number one is providing additional revenue to cover our expenses. Uh, notably our operating expenses, operations and maintenance otherwise known as O&M. Those are expenses such as personnel, supplies, services, uh, capital and equipment and debt service for our capital program. Our capital program right now for the next six years from 2023 to 2028 is around 4.1 billion. Uh, we also, <clears throat> when setting our goals, some of our assumptions are maintaining adequate reserves and operating fund cash balances. We use these, these cash balances to help mitig mitigate future rate increases. We also have to be aware of maintaining financial ratios, working with um, some of our rating agencies, some of the things that they look at, what is our debt service coverage ratio, how much cash do we have on hand. And one of the, the, the paramount things is affordability. What is the impact on our customers? How do these rate Im impacts, um, how do these rate increases impact them in combination with all the other bills and rising inflation costs? And again, uh, as noted in the past, our continuation and compliance with our consent order decrees and also taking into consideration the regional growth and development in the area and our ability to serve those that, that growing development and providing that capacity. So in summary, uh, these are across the board rate increases um, for each service fee and commodity charge. Those would be across our residential customers, commercial, master meter customers, and multifamily. As noted by Chairman Gladman, we are making some changes to our extra strength charges on the sewer side. Uh, we see some increases in our inside and outside BOD charges and increases in the outside TKN charges. Uh, several industries, commercial industries and industrial customers require um, a little bit more treatment capacity uh, than a typical customer and that's why those extra strength charges are in place. Uh, no, no increases in water and sewer capacity fees, tap-in fees to our system. And I'd like to note that stormwater charges, the 2%, is only for inside city customers. That does not apply to outside city customers. As always, our rates um, are based around a cost of service study. Those are independent studies that we perform 
Uh, typically every two to three years. We have another one planned in 2023. We'll engage and look at all of our rates to see if we're in line. And finally, what amount of revenue does the rate increases generate? You can see there around on sewer, we have around 12.1 million. We're expecting to generate water around 7.2 and a little over a million for storm for stormwater. With this slide, I like to show a little bit of our rate history, where we've been, and kind of where we plan to be in the future. Um, I've also shown some bars there, um, kind of where we're heading into a new plateau. Uh, rate increases in 2023 to 2027 are kind of leveling off at a little bit higher level um, compared to the years of around 2014 to 2021. And we're going up a little bit beyond that in the years 2028 to 2033 at a little bit higher level plateau. However, we are not exceeding where we have been in the past. In the years of 2005, six and seven, those were early days of our consent order where rates needed to be increased significantly to um, start to begin to maintain compliance. However, we've taken significant advantage of our Ohio EPA loan program um, and really, really fine-tuned our capital program and our management of that to, to keep our rates reasonable and responsible. Um, we have a lot of projects planned in the next few years, and we've accounted for those, even with those, those rate increases going up to a new plateau. However, we don't see those rate increases really going much above 6% in aggregate. We believe we'll still maintain this between 4 to 6% uh, increases during those years in the next 10 years. I also like to show this slide here as what if we didn't have steady rate increases every year? What would things look like in the future um, if we did not have year over year rate increases of around 4% on aggregate? We would see increases of around 15% we would in, for, for sewer, possibly 10, 7% for stormwater. Combined, that would be an increase of around 13%. So we would be back to those levels around 2006 and 2007. The bill impact with um, maybe taking a few years off could be around $40 a quarter, a significant increase um, compared to what we're proposing today, or $160 annually. So that could definitely impact um, our customers significantly from a, an affordability standpoint, could lead to increased delinquencies, rate shock, affordability pressures, and some decreased confidence and support in our management. With this slide, this is a, a snapshot of um, various cities across the United States. And we, the city of Columbus is in the very far right here uh, of this slide. I know it's hard to see and that little, I, I have a little dot there and a little line to kind of show you where city of Columbus on the far right compares to many of the other communities and large cities um, in the nation. And what we're showing here is kind of the changes in the household water and sewer bills from 2021 to 2022. Overall, in summary, those other dots that we have on there are some of our regional utilities around the Midwest, Louisville, Cleveland right there in the center, a bit higher rate of, of rate increases. Uh, we have Detroit and Philadelphia over to uh, the more left side and on the far left we have Indianapolis. So as you can see, we are in line with our rates with several of our regional partners. And, and most of our rate increases um, and lower rate increases can be attributable to when we started our consent decree. We started our consent decree in 2004 and five. And so that's allowed us to uh, get ahead of the game compared to a lot of other communities. This slide is just another il illustration of kind of where increases across the country have been. You can see here year over year that on average combined water and wastewater bills have risen around 5.3% every year. So we're not alone here. Uh, many communities are in the same um, boat as, as us and it's, we're, we're pretty much in line with the average. And a lot of these rate increases have been driven by the need to balance budgets, improve efficiency, and the capital needs is a main driver um, behind these rate increases. As mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, I'd like to talk about where we are with our low income and senior discount programs and some changes that we have planned for 2023. Um, we're not changing anything um, 
with the percentage of the discount that's applied, it's still going to be 20% for those that qualify on their water and sewer commodity charge. We're not changing anything as far as the eligibility, as far as who can be eligible and the things that you need for eligibility, uh, nor are we changing anything with our senior discount program. Uh, for To qualify for that program, you can be over age 60, and what we do there is we actually um, waive our fixed charge. You can actually, you can actually have the low income um, discount and the senior discount in some cases if you qualify. Master metered suburban cu customers are also eligible to adopt the program as well as multifamily and apartments can receive a 20% discount. For the multifamily, um, if the property is receiving subsidized housing benefits, they can um, receive the benefits or if they can show that 80% of the units meet the income levels of 150% of the federal poverty level or they are currently enrolled in a qualifying low income program, they can also um, be eligible. Here, a little bit of continuation on the multifamily. Um, currently, property owners that direct bill their tenants for water and sewer, they must show a copy of those bills as evidence. And that's pretty much um, what how we've been operating. And so in 2023, we're uh, proposing a new addition to this where property owners who pay water and service water and sewer services themselves and do not direct bill their tenants, what they would do in this case is show documentation of a formula used for transmitting the full benefit of the discount to those tenants. And we plan to roll out that change in 2023 in January and February of next year. Just to give you a little bit of perspective kind of where we are and, and, and our plans in our low income and senior discount program over the years, they've been pretty consistent, steady, and um, you can see there's been a bit of an increase in senior accounts over the past few years. Um, not too much change in the overall low, low income accounts um, on the program. So we looked at this and we saw, thought to ourselves, how can we increase participation? What kind of additional outreach efforts can we do? And I'll talk about that um, a little in the next couple slides. It's, it's, it's geared to our, toward our assistance programs. Um, one of those assistance programs that we currently have in place right now is our CARES Utility Bill Assistance Program, where we provide um, relief up to $750 towards an eligible water, sewer, and stormwater bill that is 90 days delinquent. We also have a, um, a similar program for small businesses that have been impacted um, financially and are facing any types of utility shutoffs. We provide a one-time matching grant of 50% of the past due amount uh, of their bill um, and up to a maximum of $5,000. One unique thing in order to provide additional relief in 2023, continuing to use some of these dollars, these ARPA dollars that we received um, from the federal government is assistance in the form of an actual credit equal to the rate increase. So we are proposing a one-time credit in 2023 of around $50 to $60 equivalent to the annual increase for residential customers for our current and new customers that qualify for our low income discount program. And finally, um, as mentioned, as far as additional outreach efforts that we plan for 2023, we looked at how can we gain more participation in this program for qualifying applicants that are currently not taking advantage. And one of our initiatives that we plan to um, pursue in 2023 is a partnership with Impact Community Action. With Impact, um, they receive many applications for Home Energy Assistance Program applications, HEAP. HEAP is a qualifying eligibility um, requirement for our program. So if they have a HEAP application that is approved, they could automatically be signed up for our low income discount program. So what we're going to do is work with impact as people come in and sign up at impact for heap if they are approved they will automatically be given an opportunity to complete our low income discount application on site so we're able to have the resident there and they could actually um, they may not be aware of our program but they could benefit right there and and sign up when they're when they're getting approved for their heap application if they don't come into the office they can still sign on uh, online and sign up for the program. If approved, then we will work with Impact. We will get that application and get those those folks that discount applied to their bill. So, looking and working with with 
um, impact, we estimate up to potentially seven to 10,000 new residents may be able to participate in this program. So we're very hopeful that we'll see a lot more participation. With that, Council Member Dorans, that is our presentation of our 2023 utility rates. And I will be open to any questions you may have. Thank you, uh, Deputy Director Lee. Uh, first of all, I just want to point out we did not receive any public speaker slips for tonight's um, uh, hearing. So uh, I will try and ask some questions. I think that uh, we've asked at these hearings in prior years um, that are, I think, would be top of mind for members of the public if, if someone was to, to be here this evening or if we have folks watching online. Uh, I did want to pause, though, and compliment the department about some of the aggressive changes around the low income and senior discount programs. That's something that council has talked, I think, a lot with the department about over the years about how best to sort of approach those uh, types of discount programs because the other rate payers end up picking up the, the tab for, for those folks. Uh, but given especially the last several years in our community in which we've seen so many folks economically needing some additional assistance, it's the right thing to do uh, right now. Um, and I think it's important to underscore that credit that you're talking about here today. And we'll get into the rates here in a moment, but really making sure that we're um, we're, we're helping to absorb these increases for folks that can least afford them right now. I think it's a really important thing for if anyone's watching tonight, really to understand that bill credit is going to be available for folks that are already enrolled in those programs. Um, so while we're talking about you know rates increasing here, and that's you know no one ever likes to see rates increasing from a you know money out of the family budget, uh, but that is being contemplated to make sure that we're doing everything we can for folks that can least afford it right now. Um, so again, you know, I think Deputy Director Lee, I think you've already answered a few of these questions in the presentation, but I do want to give an opportunity just to sort of underscore these things. Um, you know, over the last several years, Columbus has very stable rate increases, very predictable for families to be able to see how those things are, uh, you know, sort of come up. Um, I don't expect you to be an economist <laughs> talking about the broader economic picture uh, here in Columbus or certainly across the country. But when we're talking about rates between four and five percent increases, you know, that's significantly lower than what we've seen sort of inflationary pressures in other markets. So, uh, you know, just in general, uh, it's sort of a statement, you know, these rates are sort of keeping pace with what the city has already done in prior years, it's not as if these rates are out of line and sort of reacting to sort of other inflationary issues out of the marketplace. Is that fair, fair to put it? Yeah, Council Member Dorans, yes, that is fair. They are not tied directly with inflation. And inflation definitely is a factor, you know, particularly with our O&M expenses. And we did take a hard look at that. You know, inflation, our, our hope um, is that, you know, there will be, um, it will subside. You know, we're, we're taking it, you know, month by month, year by year. And so hopefully by end of 2023, we won't be around 8% for some of the supplies and materials we're seeing, um, you know, even higher than that in some cases. But, um, you know, we are prepared. Um, we have accounted for that in the rates. Um, and so, again, to your point, yes, we are keeping pace with um, past practice. And again, with, a, with an emphasis on affordability, because we understand that our rates, you know, are not the only bill that, that customers are paying for. And so being aware of that and what can we do? So we really do take a hard look at that. Um, and, and in our capital program in particular, our O&M expenses are pretty steady except for the recent inflationary increases. But when it gets down to what really drives the rates, our capital program, what can we do? How can we work with that program? Uh, and how does that tie back to our rate increases and keeping them where they're at? Um, Deputy Director, can you identify several of the key sort of capital projects that the, the department has ongoing and right now that you know, are funded by um, you know, these rates and why those are important to the city? So when people are thinking about you know, they, they turn on the tap every single day, clean water comes out, you know, help the, uh, everything from, you know, taking care of kids, you know, providing for cooking, you know, all, all the things you need clean water for in your house. Um, most folks don't understand all the infrastructure that's under the ground to make sure that when you turn on that tap, clean water comes out without a question, right? Um, but there are massive infrastructure projects all across the city of Columbus that are incredibly expensive in order for us to provide that kind of service. So uh, could you just highlight a couple of those things in general, you know, that, that the department is working on right now to make sure that service is, um, you know, continue to be reliable, continue to be safe, continue to be all the things it has been over the years? Because again, when we're talking about dollars and cents, that dollars and cents, you know, you know, most folks just think about it pays for the water that comes out, not all the infrastructure that's in the background to make sure that, make sure that happens. 
Absolutely. As, as mentioned, our capital plan over the next six years is, is exceeding around $4.1 billion. And, you know, with our capital plan, the projects, um, you know, there's a few um, highlights of the, of the capital plan, but in general, just, a, you know, we, we typically have plant infrastructure that we have to maintain. We've got um, three water plants and two wastewater plants. We're actually one of the projects that is going to be coming on board is our fourth water plant. Um, up in Delaware County. So we're actively engaged in um, a new design contract in 2023, and that should be on board around 2028, around those years, um, 2029. And so we have to plan for that type of project. It's a major $250 million project. We also have um, our water residuals where we're looking at you know, the byproduct of our treatment process. How do we manage residuals just as we do our biosolids on the sewer side? Um, we also have our Blueprint Columbus program. Many, many residents are aware of, of that program. They've seen some of the work we've done in their neighborhoods and they're seeing we're moving into new neighborhoods. So we will continue that program, which is around 80 to $100 million annually in our capital program on the sewer side. Um, with new development related to Intel that's coming into our, our region here, a lot of new uh, requirements and capacity needs to serve that growth and development. So we have those incorporated into our capital plan. Even, those, even though those are years out into the future, we still, have to, we still have to be prepared and look at our rates. Do we have the rate structure in order to service that debt for those capital projects that aren't necessarily in 2023, but are out there in uh, five to 10 years in the future? In, in building off that, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, just the rates in general, I know I ask this question literally every single year because I think this is the question, if you're watching at home, I think everyone is, you know, wants answered. Um, given everything from their presentations, given everything that you've just talked about, all the uh, dollars and cents it takes to keep the infrastructure going, and, that, you know, this I think is more of a question for Chair Gladman. Um, when we talk about the, the Sewer Water Advisory Board, I mean, you're members of the public, that are charged with overseeing these rates, right? So, you know, just talking about making sure that there's a citizen aspect baked into this process. So it's not just the department saying, um, you know, we need to raise it w rates by X, Y, and Z, and there's no sort of examination from a public standpoint of, of what those are. Um, so, Chair Gladman, could you talk a little bit about the, the board itself and how you sort of come to, um, you know, the conclusion that we're at here today? Then ultimately, I, I think the question for both of you, and this is the one I think if you're at home watching, is, is this the lowest rates uh, increase that we can afford as a city, uh, given all of the capital needs, given all of the personnel needs that are out there? Let me answer your, your last question first. Mm -hmm. uh, I think so. I mean, based on the analytical that is provided to us as, as the board, from staff, from the uh, uh, city auditor's office, looking at the debt requirements, looking out five to ten years, and really trying to adjust so you don't see this huge rate increase because you bring a $250 million project on. You're not trying to pay for that uh, in one year or one day. So I, I think it is prudent. It's something that certainly the uh, the uh, advisory board talks about a great deal. The advisory board is made up of a variety of people uh, from a, uh, in the city and, and suburban communities as well. Uh, they represent commercial interest. Uh, legal services is there representing the interest of our lower income residents. Um, you know, we have someone that represents seniors, me. Uh, and, uh, you know, so we look at, you know, those various programs. We have a lot of conversation about the uh, low, low income dis and senior discount program and how we can expand that. And one of the, really the Barrier is around multifamily and, and how that is water is built and submetered and how, how do you get that benefit to the residents and that's something that we have ongoing conversations about and I think incrementally we're trying to uh, to address that but there is uh, I think reasonable amount of good discussion uh, it's not a matter of just saying okay and we question those those rates and uh, and the need for those, you know, rates. Everyone would like to see, you know, no increase or very minor increases every year. Um, but I think uh, it's prudent, both from the department's perspective and in concurrence from the board, that we, we need to look out not just this year, but what's going in, in the 
years and, and actually to kind of shape that rate increase to address those future needs as well as the immediate needs. So you could skip a year as uh, Mr. Lee indicated and then you just have a big rate increase. And so you go from very minor or no rate increase and then you have a 15 or 20 percent rate increase. And I'm old enough to remember when those rate increases occurred and that's, you know, substantial, especially for, uh, you know, like multifamily properties and commercial properties. Uh, those are very substantial rate increases, operating increases, and equally so for the resi for residential as well. So I think uh, the rates are, are equitable and, and easily justified. Deputy Director Lee, same question to you from the department standpoint. Um, Sure. As far as, uh, you know, just a few more comments on that. Uh, as Chair Gladman mentioned, we do have a good variety of representation on the board, as he mentioned, you know, suburban, commercial, residential, industrial, and senior. So we've got um, board members that represent all, um, all, all of our customers. And our, all of our meetings is we typically have four to five meetings a year. Um, where we really dive into the details of our capital plan, what we're doing um, in each enterprise, um, what is coming up in the next um, few years, what we can plan for. And those are open meetings. Um, so they are around 9 o'clock in the morning, and so it's open to the public to come and, and share, and listen, uh, and ask any questions that they want. So we would encourage a, a more people to, to come out and, 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 and see those, and also get on our website um, to see more information on, about our projects. Um, as far as, you know, the rates and keeping them low, are they the lowest that they could be? I think it gets back to what Chairman Gladman said about kind of our financing strategy. You know, you get some other communities, um, some other, Communities have different structures and different philosophies about how they finance these projects. Some like to increase rates significantly and pay things down with cash in the first few years versus part of our strategy is these are long-term assets that have life of 20 plus years. And so a lot of our financing strategy covers that full life of those assets. So we're not having one population, one community group paying for a certain asset at a certain time. So I think that that's a, a very prudent approach and that helps us to keep our rates kind of where they're at low um, and reasonable. So um, I think that covers all the yeah. questions you asked. Yeah, thank you, Dep Deputy Director. Again, I, I think those are all the questions that I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of the public and then also trying to put myself uh, obviously in the shoes of, of sort of council's role here because um, this will be legislation that will come before us that ultimately uh, this body will pass. So um, I want to thank you both for, for being here tonight. I um, want to thank folks that have tuned in virtually to, to watch the hearing. Um, if folks have uh, questions about th these rates, um, particularly, they're welcome to contact my office at 614 645 8201. Uh, my email also is radorns, D O R A N S, at columbus.gov. Happy to provide uh, any information to the public that uh, folks are requesting. I also want to encourage individuals in our community to get on the Department of Public Utilities website, and that's columbus.gov slash utilities. You can also contact the department at 614-645-8276, um, especially if folks uh, want more information or are interested in being an advocate to make sure that more folks in our community know about the low, low income and senior discount programs. As we've heard tonight, um, there has been uh, a lot of effort put in over the years about how to better deploy those discounts to make sure that those are getting to people who need them and the utilization rate goes up. And I know that's something both the, um, the advisory board, the department and council has really been harping on for a long time is finding unique ways in order to make sure that we're getting those discounts out. Uh, and finally, there is still public assistance dollars through Impact and others. So if folks are behind on their water and sewer bill, please contact the department. We can make sure that you get uh, pointed to the right, uh, right folks to be able to help out with that. Um, so as these uh, ordinances currently stand, 36, uh, 
3036-2022 enacting new sewer water rates, or I'm sorry, new water rates, and ordinance 3037-2022, which enacts new sanitary sewer rates, and 3038 enacting new storm water, water fees will appear for pa passage on our next Columbus City Council agenda meeting uh, held this coming Monday, November 25th at 5 p.m., so that would be the Monday before th the Thanksgiving holiday um, for potential passage. Again, if folks uh, would like to contact council, my office is the most appropriate to do so. Uh, and again, I want to thank both Deputy Director Lee and Chair Gladman for being here tonight, uh, in addition to, to my staff, Kevin McCain and Andy McDonald, for helping put, put together tonight's hearing. So with that, uh, this hearing is, is adjourned. Thanks a lot.